Yo, 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 salam, nerds. It's your boy, Neves, a.k.a. Watch Neves, and I'm here with two new guests today. Jazz is not with us, but he might be able to join us later. I'm going to introduce you to two of my very special guests. Uh, but my first guest, it's someone who I've been friends with for a long, long time. And fun fact, my Instagram handle, Watch with Neves, was actually stolen from my friend, Reeves which was watch with Reeves. So I, I stole her Twitter handle or her Instagram handle. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to start using this because I can't think of anything better. <laughs> Actually, what happened was I had a different name. It was like a TV guy or something on Instagram. And I forgot my password. I got locked out. And I was like, Reeves, I, I, I got locked out and I need another name. Can I just steal yours? And she's like, yeah, fine. Just don't sue me later if you become more famous than me. <laughs> uh, fun fact, you took a screenshot of this conversation just in case later I decided that he stole my name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I you did. did. <laughs> I took a screenshot for proof. I was like, she gave me permission to use her, <laughs> her, her copy her name. Uh, Reeves, tell us a little bit about yourself. What are you up to these days? What are you doing? So, um... Career-wise, I'm going to school right now for mental health counseling, which I just started last August. So yay. Um, but for fun, TV is my life. Uh, like uh, Neves shared already, a few years ago, I started my own site, Watch With Reeves. And then since then, I've been, I write on that sometimes. I haven't been paying much attention to that main site, but I write for a bunch of others. Um, and yeah, like I write about everything movies but usually tv the bachelor which is Neves's like yeah. thing um that's my thing yeah, Marvel, DC. honestly i write about a bunch of stuff but that's that's my side thing and i just went back to school recently so i try to balance both and i am looking forward to returning to conventions because then i will have so much more nerdy activity that i will be resuming yes yes that's awesome all right thanks Reeve. next i want to introduce one of my favorite tiktokers in fact i almost didn't even start my podcast because of her because she was so good at doing this character where she would pretend to be a toxic guy and talk about marvel and i was like when she she's so good she is so good and i was like what a horrible time to start a podcast <laughs> when everybody is just trashing on male podcasters but like they were so good, and I loved all her TikToks, and she's amazing. Oh. Say, what's going on, Christine? Hey, what's up? I never heard that before. Hold on, give me a second to catch my breath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, yeah, Devante. I just, uh, I was just so frustrated, and I felt like, oh, then there was, like, that trend, you know, where everybody was using the beers, and I yeah, like, well, let's make it Marvel, because, you know, I'm just a nerd. I'm always going to talk about Marvel, so that's what I did. Um, I appreciate that though. So yeah, mostly I am on TikTok. I'm everywhere though. I have Instagram, I have Facebook, I have a YouTube. Um, and essentially I started out just telling original stories. Um, some were fun, some were like fantastical superheroes, some were about representation, some were a little bit more serious about colorism. Um, and I used Barbie and then that was a little hard to get into only because starting from zero when it's your and it's an original story. This is kind of hard to grow audience. And then um, someone convinced me to like, you talk to me about Marvel all the time. I'm talking about Marvel on your, like online. I'm like, I don't know. I just never thought of it. Like I never thought saw myself as a Marvel content creator. Like it just seemed like there were so many already. There wouldn't be a place for me, um, but they convinced me to do it. So I did. And then that's when everything kind of blew up. <laughs> so now I can see yeah. my Barbies with Marvel. And it's pretty awesome. Well, other stuff too. Cause like you see, I got, the baby girls doing everybody so yeah i i love that i love that because sometimes like i don't want to be on camera so like to use like a, a placeholder like a barbie that's such a great idea that's really I cool i love it i have my contacts in now but i usually wear my glasses i'm lazy and we've been in a pandemic for two years <laughs> yeah <laughs> look it's so cute that is so it's got your hair cute. and everything night outfit oh that's awesome I love it, love it. I love it. All right. Well, speaking of Marvel, let's start off the show a little bit. Let's start it off with uh, with Moon Knight. So hopefully you guys saw the latest episode of Moon Knight. It was pretty exciting. One of the things that I liked right off the bat that I want to talk about is um, the actress who they got to play. I think her name is uh, Mae Calame. 
Kellamaway, I think her name mm-hmm. is. So she is actually Rami's sister on the show Rami. That's where you know her from. Oh, yeah. And I thought that was so cool. I get to see her come up. I was like, she she started off on a small show like that, and now she is well, it's not a small show. It won like an Emmy, I believe. Mm-hmm. But still, it was a not very well known show, and now she's in Marvel. And now she's Mark Spector's wife. I love that. That was so cool. That's really cool. I actually didn't realize that it was his sister from the show. Yeah, awesome. it was the Dina, I believe. Yeah. And it's cool because I feel like the show is doing a great job at like using uh, Egyptian ap- actors wherever mm-hmm. they can. They've been putting them as composers. They've been putting them as uh, side characters. It's really, really cool to see more and more of that. And I, I love it. It's, it's really cool. Uh, what did you guys think of her acting? What do you guys think of her as a new addition to this episode? I like it. I, I think it's really exciting. Like you said, like it's so cool that they're sticking to actually using like Egyptian actors or like I was like jamming out to music at the end too uh but yeah no I really really like her a lot and I'm excited I've only briefly read the comics so I don't have a lot to like compare to with the story but I'm excited for I'm even more excited now because I didn't realize she was in Rami but yeah I think she's great so far that's cool. Christine, what about you? What were your thoughts? No, same. I was excited because just now I didn't know that she was Egyptian. So that was awesome. I could see she was a person of color, which is always exciting for me. I was like, yes, mm-hmm. I'm probably one of us. Um, but no, I thought she was really good. And like, um, like we, I wasn't familiar with her um, in Romney, but I just thought she came in and it just fitted naturally. Um, mm-hmm. I was kind of waiting for it because if you see like the promos, it's the three of them in the waiting room, in the Marvel waiting room that they can't talk about the show. Um, so I was kind of wondering what she was or who she was in the show. So I like her and she kicks butt. Like I saw her on the he was like, oh, he was like tall over mm-hmm. there. Um, yeah. Steven was like, she's awesome. And she is. <laughs> yeah. I like how when he was freaking out um, and she was like, okay, we, and he just was not about it. He was like, I'm not a fighter. I'm just can't do this. And she was just like, it's okay. Okay. We'll figure out something else. Like, yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah. She didn't like get upset. Like, what's wrong with you? She's like, okay. Like, you know, it's like yeah. move forward. So I really like her. Yeah. Character. We'll figure That's something else out. Yes. She's, she's actually a phenomenal actress. You don't even have to watch the show Rami. There is one episode in Rami where it's all about her. Mm-hmm. And it's like a, it's like a side, side quest kind of thing. It doesn't have to do anything with the storyline. And it's about her and how she like goes on to date these like white guys and they end up fetishizing her and she realized that like oh it's not the fact that they're attracted to me it's the fact that i'm being fetishized Mm -hmm. it's such a well written and well acted episode anybody who's listening right now check it out is rami season two i believe it's called dina uh, and it's the episode about you don't even need to know anything Mm -hmm. about the show it's like a standalone episode really really great episode highly recommend it her acting is phenomenal in it it's really really good so uh, I'm glad to see her. What was that? Sorry, where can we watch Rami? Oh, Rami's on Hulu. So you can watch, if you have a Hulu account, you can watch it. Yep. Yeah. So that's cool. Um, the other thing that I really liked is that suit that he wore as uh, Mr. Knight. It's, it's, so a, cool. it's a dope looking suit. I know that's going to be a cosplay. Yeah. Next, the next convention, every dude is going to try to pull up in that cosplay. I have the have the sleeves rolled up, yes. trying to look looking all GQ. What do you guys think of that costume? Awesome. That costume was so cool. And I also love that, like, that was that costume. But then, like, when he was still himself, it was, like, more generic and it wasn't, like, as cool. So I like that shift when it changes to, like, the actual one. You guys notice that, right? Or is that, am I off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like that shift, too. So I like that they had both of the contrasting personalities. But, oh, man, that, like, the cool one, oh, I was just like, whoa. And then we reminded it again to watch it again. I'm like, this is so awesome. I just love seeing, like it all come together and then his eyes open it's awesome i love the fact that he looked at himself in the mirror real quick and he like starts feeling himself yeah. he's like damn i look good yeah. <laughs> i like that christine what about you what do you think i was waiting for this outfit because that's the um solo <laughs> portrait of my favorite you know when he has, when he has the sleeves rolled up i was waiting so he's yes i was like yes this is what i came here for i definitely yeah. like that and like she said i like that they keep their personalities right completely different people and i thought the oscar because he's doing them you could they look like different people Mm-hmm. Yes. And not just the accent, like the mannerisms, the um, way he holds mm-hmm. himself, like everything. Yes. Steven and Mark are not the same person, and I just love it. And they keep it. Also, just, I know we're talking about Moon Knight, but another person who did a good job was uh, Tatiana Maslany on Orphan Black. She played all these different oh, clones, yeah, yeah. and she was amazing. But yeah, I mean, I think. She's going to. Sorry. Go she's going to be Hulk, right? She's going to be in Marvel, too. She's right? She Hulk, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's phenomenal. But I think, like, 
you can tell because like Oscar, like people like Oscar Isaac or Tatiana Maslany, like these guys are such phenomenal actors that like I'm not shocked that Oscar Isaac like pulled this off like effortlessly. Like you can absolutely yes. believe like Christine's saying, like it's two different people, whether it's how they talk, how they act, or even like their superhero costumes different. And it's it's cool mm-hmm. to see that. Like I love seeing that transition from what you know you want. So like you weren't expecting to see this generic version. So I thought that was really cool. But Oscar yeah. Isaac is like- even in the t- scene where they're looking at the camera footage and they just like a screenshot of just like him and he's like that's not me yeah. and like it's just a picture but you can tell mm-hmm. that's not the same character it's, it's that's eyes. how good he is yeah i, I love it's it it's just like so, yeah, his eyes tell it off. so quick question quick question one of the things that i've seen go back and forth on tiktok is that like when he's in that suit right the little ice cream color suit <laughs> everyone's like that's a man from the female gaze and you see like thor with his ripped abs and like big hulking muscles that's from the male gaze so like what do you guys think like what do you find more attractive is it that you know that slicks gq suit look or is it the big muscular god of thunder look i was literally just thinking when i was doing this video because like you said him in that suit versus him with the regular like superhero thing with the mummy thing it literally is female gaze versus male gaze to me. And I mm-hmm. here prefer the suit 100%. I prefer Steve over Mark right now. Like, I feel like a guy yeah. would want to be Mark, but I want to be a Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Terrible, I agree 100%. Yeah, that's Steve. <laughs> I love that. That's a, you want to know something cool about the, uh, the suit? So the suit is actually from his subconscious because his only friend is that guy in the gold suit. And that suit is almost exactly the same as that guy. He has the same gloves as him. He's got the same tie. So it's literally the guy in the gold outfit, but and, and he's got the gold face paint on. It's the same thing, except they change it to white. So, like, I thought that was a cool little uh, little reference. Yeah, that's really cool. Let's see what else we talked about. Uh, I also liked when uh, Ethan Hawke started talking to Steven. And, like, halfway through that conversation, I'm like... Man, he's got a point, man. I was, I was, I was, Ethan Hawke was so good at delivering those lines that I was kind of like, yo, maybe we should hear him out. He's got, he's got, got a point. And, and then when he talks about, like, you know, oh, we got to kill children. He's like, all right, yeah. I guess we got to stop there. He, yeah. he had us until there. But Ethan Hawke does a really, yeah, really good job. What do you guys think of his performance? I was going to say he blew me away. I was just like, on edge of my seat when he was talking, like, oh, my gosh, I've missed Ethan Hawke. I'm so glad that he's, like, coming back. And it kind of broke my heart to see him that he's going to be the villain. I was like, no. <laughs> but that's a good job. Yeah, that whole conversation, I was just like, yes, sir. <laughs> okay, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> so good. <man. laughs> um, and he definitely carried that. Even from, like, the first episode, like, I believe he's the person who walks around with crack glass in the shoes. Like, I don't know. He's just, he's just really pulling off this part. It's really good. He really is. Really is. He really is. Yeah. I, Reeves, what about you? What do you think? I agree, too. I'm excited to see him back. I feel like it's been a minute since we've seen him do anything. Um, and I think he's pulling off, like, the stuff, like, you know, he's a villain, but he's, like, subtle and, like, wise and has wisdom about it. And it's, like, yeah, cool kind of villain. And I love those because I feel like the psychological villains are the creepiest versus the ones that yes. are, like, in your face and it's, with that kind of thing. So I think he's pulling it off amazingly. And I love this type of villain. This is the type of villain I live for, especially these types of stories. So I'm excited to yeah. see what else he does. He's really smooth with the two because there was this one line where um, he was telling Steve about like what uh, Amit does and Steve is like super panicking and he goes, uh, yes, he was betrayed by his avatar. He's like, oh, like the movie with the blue people. And he's like, and he's like, uh, no. And then he's like, um, oh, so you mean the anime? And then he says so subtly, Steven, stop it. Like he's intimidating him, but he's also like, Steven, stop it. <laughs> like in the middle of like trying to intimidate this guy, he has the subtlety to go, yo, shut up. <laughs> it's so funny. He, he, it's so subtle. But, like, stuff like that goes a long way for making a character really likable. Absolutely. Here's what I saw, kind of going with um, what Reed said about um, him being more psychological villain. I call, like, the true believer. Because yes. he is... Yes. Like, I don't, I don't know how to describe other than a true believer. Like, he really believes what he's saying. He practices what he preaches. Like, this is it for him. This is in his soul. It's not just something he picked up because he was angry. I feel like he really truly believed in Ahmed and what Ahmed was bringing to the table. Maybe he was hurt by the movie, 
um, guy because he sounded like, oh, you, you think he's going to let you go? I know about him. No, trust me. You can't trust mm-hmm. him. That's such a good thing to add, the fact that he used to be uh, Konshu's avatar, and it added an extra element in there, and you're like, oh. And even the whole time, he was like, like, Konshu was talking shit about him. <laughs> He's, like, <laughs> ignoring him. He's like, oh, ignore him. That's all he can do. He's like, ah, don't worry about him. I- I've been through this. It's so funny. It's almost like a abusive relationship that he was in, and now someone else is in that yeah. relationship. And he's like, I was there. I've, I've been what you've been through. And it's pretty funny how they were treating that. It was it was really cool. And I liked it. I, I liked the whole uh, dynamic between Ethan Hawke and Oscar Isaac and uh, Konshu. Um, it's really cool and I'm, I'm going to see where it goes and it's really interesting where he's like, I'm true justice. How much like he's justice. Maybe we get to see why he left him or what happened. It's going to be interesting. I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. No, I agree. Well, and the like one thing that maybe that I'm surprised they didn't, well maybe they didn't bring it up because it would be too much. But you know the whole um, that question that people ask sometimes like, would you kill baby Hitler? I feel like he's the kind of yes. person who would be like See, now if we had, um, <laughs> we could have presented all of yeah. this if we had to try to stop. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like he's that kind of person. Yeah. Exactly. That, I feel like that's the big philosophy yeah. that this one kind of really, uh, you know, it's posing the question. Like, Eternals pose the question that, like, oh, would you be able to sacrifice, you know, this whole civilization if it, it could mean more can flourish, right? That was the big question for Eternals. Mm-hmm. In this one, the big question is, like, you know, would you kill baby Hitler if it would grow up to do this, all these awful things? And I'm just like, hell yeah, he's going to kill everybody who's going to turn out to grow up and be evil, which is pretty, pretty interesting. I, and, like, it's going to be one of those things where people are like, Thanos was right. I think there's going to be people mm-hmm. that are going to be like, you know, Ethan Hawke's character was right. And we're going to see a little bit of, like, both sides. I think those are the best characters where people feel like, you know what, his method wasn't correct, but, you know, you know, he had a point. He had a point. I, I, I feel like those make the best villains. Yeah. Yeah, like Killmonger. Because a lot of what Killmonger said, I completely agree with. He was just, he yeah. was about it, what he's saying. But, like, and he had, and he, the, the best part of that movie is the fact that he even changed T'Challa's mind. Like, Mm-hmm. Like, no, mm-hmm. It's not the way you're doing it, but the message was right. So, yes, yes, and even though, like, you know, he probably has these crazy methods, he was kind of right. He was like, you know, when he talked about like he could have prevented the Armenian genocide mm-hmm. from happening, he could have prevented all this from happening. You want to know what's really cool about that? So, I posted that scene on my TikTok, and people from other countries were like, you know, that's not the same scene. In other countries, they use different wars, and one of them is the war in Iraq. Mm-hmm. The war in Iraq is the one that they used to uh, talk about it. Mm-hmm. They switched it for the Armenian genocide, mm-hmm. and they were like, yeah, we. We can't throw it back on America because, you know, America killed over 100,000 civilians. That's a huge number. And mm. for outside of America, that's we're considered the bad guys in that situation. Mm. There were no weapons oh, wow. of mass destruction. There was no reason for us to be there. And we did this horrible thing. And if you go and watch this episode in different countries, they throw us in there. They throw the Iraq uh, war. Oh. It's pretty interesting. I have no idea. I thought that was pretty interesting. But that was it's a, little, a little fun trivia or uh, tidbit about that episode. But no, man, Moon Knight, um, pretty, pretty good, man. I am, I am a little bit more hooked on this from the second season than I was on from the not second season, the second episode than I was on the first episode. The first episode, what I really liked about it was those flashbacks. Yeah. They got rid of those flashbacks, um, but I feel like the story is progressing a little better, and I feel like every episode is directed a little differently, which mm-hmm. is pretty exciting. So, what do you guys think of the first two episodes as a whole? Do you like the first one better, second one better? They're both really good. What do you think, Christine? So I don't think I like one more than the other because they were there were two pieces of a puzzle that needed to be the way they were. So to me, the first episode was amazing. The second episode keeps the story going. Um, mm-hmm. To me, it was one of the best paced openings, and I like that we were as lost as Steven was um, in the first episode, and then we get a little bit more and a little bit more. They don't give you everything right away in the second episode. Like Steve, like Mark doesn't come around, and so I think he's in that locker. So I think it's really well done. I hope they keep it up because a couple of uh, shows, they started off really strong and then fell off for me. That's like, ah. Yeah. But um, pacing wise, I think it's doing really well so far. I'm like all in, but I'm definitely like Team Steven if we're picking sides with Team Steven and Mark. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm Team Steven too, so I. I, yeah. I know. I love, I love that lovable idiot, man. He's, he's so funny. <laughs> he's so relatable. That's why. 
play. I'm just like, oh my god, I see myself in them. I'm so like aloof. Exactly. And I do, and I I agree with you. I like the pacing, and I also like that the audience is like on this journey with them. And yes. like you have no idea what's happening, but then like all these like in the second episode, it's a little bit crazier. There's more fighting. You're seeing the werewolf properly, or you're seeing all these things happen, and it's like we're witnessing it with him, and you're like, oh my god, what's happening? And that's exactly what he's yes. going through. So I love that you said that because I absolutely agree. I think that's why I like both episodes. The second episode was definitely had more action, uh, but it was also cool to. See the first episode sort of lay the pieces, but we still don't really know everything yet. Um, so yeah, I'm yeah. Excited! I feel like they've done a good job of uh, keeping me interested so far to where I want to know what happens next. I'm not like, oh, okay, this is whatever. I'm over it. So I'm excited. That's funny. Speaking of not knowing what happened, uh, one of the things that I think is really funny now that we've seen Kanchu and Mark Spector talk to each other. One scene that I can't get out of my head is the fact that, like, at one point, Kanchu and Mark had to go to a pet store to replace his fish. Like, because, like, <laughs> the fish had one fin. Yeah. So, like, these guys were like, all right, we can't have this idiot figuring this out. We got to go to a pet store and get this guy a new fish. <laughs> like, it's so, so funny, funny oh. that they did that. So, I love that. Sorry, go ahead. I was like, do we know why they, like, what happened they had to replace the fish? Like, I don't know. I I, I want to find out what's the deal with the fish. And it, it, like, <laughs> I'm excited. That's like one. If, if they it's like if they don't explain what happened to that fish, then the whole show is a bust for me. I, I I'm gonna throw away the whole show. That's my. <laughs> I need to know. Yo, Loki. It reminds me of Venom when he talked yesterday. He said something, and it just sounded like Venom. And like when he's like, oh. he said something. I can't remember the line, but it just gave me Venom vibe. Like the voice was lingering around in the back. It was hilarious. No, I can believe it. That's yeah, funny. We actually did it live with me. I don't know if you know who's Amaria and my other friend JC. And we said the same thing. I was like, because in the first episode, I was like, why does it sound like Venom? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that actor sounds like Venom. Yeah. Mm. That's, kind of That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't even notice the voice, but you're right. Does he talk when he's in the Moon Knight costume? No, so it's Conchu's voice. It, oh, you're yeah. talking about Conchu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whenever he's like walking around, either. Oh my God, you're right. Yeah, so it does it's sound like, like he said, it... he's like, drop it. I forgot what the line was, but he says something and he's just like, don't do that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my God, this is totally like Venom. This is hilarious. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. That's so funny. I, I love this. We, we have an Egyptian Venom. That's awesome. <laughs> I love hilarious. it. Venom with a. Venom with a little bit of an Egyptian accent. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Egyptian accents, uh, one thing was really cool was that when uh, Ethan Hawke was doing his like spell, he was actually speaking in Coptic, which is really cool. It's, it's like uh, a language and it's the religion in um, in e Egypt. A lot of people I know who are Egyptian are co Coptic Christians. And it was really cool for them to, to make that little subtle note in there for the culture. I thought that was pretty cool. I, I love when they do stuff like that. It's really cool to me. No, I, I love when, I didn't even notice that, but um, when they do things that only the people who are of that culture would appreciate, I just love that. Because even like with some Twitter things that I only picked up on because I used to like love like um, like Asian movies. Well, I still do, but like I used to really be into a lot heavier. And so, like, even something small, like when they took off the shoes at the door, like I know that's a thing that's like everybody does. Yeah, I mean, it's like little things that are cultural, that are sprinkled throughout, but they don't explain um, that. But it just because that's the way it is. So uh, yeah, I love when they mm -hmm. do that in shows. I love that. And now he's going to be in Egypt. So we're probably going to see even more of that. I'm really excited. Yeah, um, that's going to be pretty exciting. And like, um, you know, hopefully if we if we see more episodes with uh, Oscar Isaac shirtless and with no pants on, hopefully it's after we open our fast. Cause we can't be watching that during <laughs> Ramadan. Like, <it's... laughs> I know. I'm like, thank God I'm watching this right when it came out at midnight because this is a few hours later. Like, I'd be fasting. Uh... And... <laughs> what have you done? There's actually fun fact. There was an interview or something. He said something where he's like, "I didn't know, but people were calling me daddy." But that's cool. <laughs> like, that's hey man. Like, hey. Yeah. So, any other thoughts before we wrap up about Moon Knight? Uh, Reeves, you want to go? Um, I'm excited to see what's to come, and I just want to. I mentioned this earlier, but I want to give a shout out to the music because that at the credits, whatever yes. music they were playing, it was amazing and. It was authentic, and I just love that they put that in there. So I just hope that 
and I know and I hope that it continues to be like that. I just love the authenticity and it makes me excited that if they're put this much effort into Moon Knight that this will be the same thing we'll see in Miss Marvel. So being Pakistani, yeah. that's just something I'm really excited about. So this gives me a lot of hope and a lot of excitement. No, that is such a great point. The fact that like they're taking care of this show, adding details, adding Egyptian details, adding Egyptian actors, like I like all of that stuff is being noticed. And even just like the song in the end credit, like if we're gonna get to see some Pakistani song at the end of like Miss Marvel, how cool would that be? I'll be so excited. <laughs> so I this show is giving me more hope for Miss Marvel, which is really, really cool and really exciting. And I, I love everything about the show. I think it's it's super exciting. And they said that the fifth episode is going to be the big one. So everyone's going to be like, whoa, it's going to be really cool. Which they do that a lot. I noticed Marvel does that a lot. They have like a fifth or fourth episode that's supposed to like change the game, which is very interesting. It's like Game of Thrones uh, but that yeah. way. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, Christine, what about you? Any final thoughts on uh, Moon Knight? I agree with both of you. I definitely was jammed underneath it. I was like, oh, what is this? This is really cool. This... The fifth episode thing... I wish she didn't say that only because Loki let me down so bad because I was so excited at the end at the post credit scene of episode four and episode five was just like completely just trash to me so I just <laughs> hope that it like this stays as as amazing as it seems right now one thing I was thinking about when I was watching it is that it's so creepy it will be more it'd be more in place to come out like in October so I know there was a lot mm -hmm. of delay because of COVID Oh yeah, wonder, COVID. Yeah. The original idea was to come out like last October, because like with the it might have been. Yeah, because when he was in the courtyard and like the wolf thing, and I was just it was just so creepy, and it's just such a different no. scene. And I was very true happy that Marvel is doing this, because if you look at Phase Three, like almost all the movies, even though they're different characters, they have like the same structure. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They really they, like. I love Marvel, but it's, it's almost the same thing over and over again. So the fact that mm -hmm. they're stretching out with like Eternals and with this and um, this Marvel's like a whole different tone, it looks like anyway. So I'm just excited to, you know, see where this ride goes and hoping for the best. <laughs> me too, me too. That's awesome, man. I I'm excited. Um... So far, man, we're liking the show. So this is really cool. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. I really appreciate it. Uh, guys, check us out on our next episode. It's going to be about Bridgerton. It's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, Christine, where can people find you? You can find me at Sunel J. That's C-I-N-E-L-L-E-J-A-Y. Everywhere. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook. Awesome, awesome. Reeves, what about you? Where can people find you? Um, on, I mainly use Instagram, and it's at Watch with Reeves. So just Watch with, and then Reeves is R E E B S. Yes, yes. Not to be confused with Watch with Knees, which is N W -E, e B Z. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Awesome episode. And hopefully you guys will join us on our next episode where we talk about Bridgerton. Bye, guys. Bye.